We are less than a week away from the Batley and Spen by-election, and the contest seems to be getting increasingly dirty. On the one hand, as we've talked about on previous shows, outriders for the Labour right are getting ready to blame a Labour defeat on supposedly racist and homophobic Muslim voters. Those are lines coming from both Labour sources and um, centrist journalists. At the same time, there are some genuinely unsavoury activists piling into the constituency. Earlier today, a video from Byline TV showed Labour candidate Kim Leadbeater getting confronted in the street. Yeah, this is where I live. This is my community. Don't come here and shout at me in the street. The Muslim community of Batley and Spen deserve better deserve than this. Better. They deserve better than no, this. We're, we're the community. I'm asking you, are you going away. to support Don't walk away. Muslim Don't walk away. Don't walk away. Parents. Do not walk away. Parents. Parents. You don't want their children to learn about LGBT indoctrination. Are you supporting us, Kim? Kim, I'm here. Answer the question. Why are you running? Kim, I'm here to talk to you. Kim is walking are you going away. to support Muslim Kim parents who don't want their children to learn about... I've been here 60 years of my life. So speak to this gentleman. We are going to chase Labour at every step. Now, that was a really, really horrible video on every account. You've got to remember Kim Leadbeater, her sister, five years ago, was killed in the constituency by a far-right activist. So to have a group of men aggressively haranguing her in the street is really, really horrible to watch. At the same time, some important background there is that Kim Leadbeater is gay. And so you've got these people shouting at her, are you going to be backing LGBT education in schools? Um, really, really, well, I mean, obviously it's outrightly homophobic, but also she's clearly being targeted because of her own um, sexuality. So absolutely appalling, disgusting. It's also important to note that the man harassing Kim Leadbeater isn't in any way representative of the Muslim community in Batley. In fact, he's not even from Batley. Um, so he's called Shaquille Afzar, um, and he was one of the leaders of the anti-LGBT protests in Birmingham in 2019. There's actually an interview um, with Owen Jones of him from those protests back then. So he is not a representative constituent. He's a, he's a reactionary and a trouble maker. Now, the original tweet from Byline TV identified Afsar as a George Galloway supporter. It's obviously George Galloway who's who's standing against Labour, ostensibly to try and get rid of Keir Starmer. Now, that was also repeated by Keir Starmer, by the way, that this was a George Galloway um, supporter or part of his campaign. Now, that has been pushed back against by Galloway. The extremist who harassed my Labour opponent today has, I'm told, previously been thrown out by my security from one of my public meetings. He is a provocateur. However, um, despite that attempt for George Galloway or by George Galloway to distance himself from um, this this activist or this provocateur, speaking to Byline TV after that incident, Kim Leadbeater told them or said that Galloway had in fact been laughing on the other side of the road. Sadly, over the last sort of 24 hours, things have become slightly less civil. Don't walk away, don't walk away. Um, it's been um, a tough day today, I have to be honest. We were out campaigning outside one of the local mosques and suddenly, and then suddenly there was a big group of mainly men, I would say, who started shouting at me in the street trying to say they were asking me questions, but they certainly weren't giving me any chance to answer any questions. Um, some of them not local. Um, George Galloway was at the other side of the street laughing and I was extremely intimidated. And this is not good for our area. This is not what people need. I don't need this. My family don't need this and our community doesn't need it. That is not how politics should be done. We need debate, we need discussion. We probably need disagreement, but we don't need abuse and we don't need intimidation. Um, but I am worried about some of the um, more sinister elements of um, other people's campaigns, shall we say. And it's very upsetting to think that other people think they've got a right to come in and cause disruption and sow division. It's the last thing this community needs. So what we're seeing here is, on the one hand, as we've talked about on previous shows, an obvious attempt by Labour outriders to tar the general populace of, of Batley as reactionaries. But we're also seeing, I mean, as you saw from that clip and that response from Kid Leadbeater, that this is actually becoming quite a, an unpleasant by-election in, in many ways. That scene, I think everyone who, who watches this show will agree, was was 
appalling. How this fits into a broader narrative about the by-election is a difficult question, though. Lots of people saying different things online, lots of people who've been on the ground. And here I'm going to defer to you, Aaron, because you were there last week. And in fact, you have a feature on the by-election published mm-hmm. today on the website at navaramedia.com. I do recognise checking that out. Um, so having been there um, only a week ago, Aaron, what's your reaction to the video we just showed of, of Kim mm-hmm. Ledbetter getting harassed essentially by uh, an activist who wasn't from the constituency, but you know is trying to tap into something, yep. I suppose? Yep. So on the one hand, you've got obviously the, the backstory about, you know, the school teacher in Batley. I'm surprised in a way it didn't happen sooner, even if Galloway didn't stand. You know, you've had issues with the uh, the Reform Party, Lawrence Fox trying to go up there. I believe we're talking on Friday night. I believe Tommy Robinson's going there tomorrow. Um, there is a there's a large minority population there, large Muslim population, not just Kashmiri, also Gujarati. Uh, and so it could be something of a flashpoint for the far right. You had BMP councillors in the area, I think, 15 years ago. Uh, so it's 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 going to be a very volatile situation, of course, the, the tragic death of Do- uh, Joe Cox in, in 2016. So I should say not death, the murder of Joe Cox by a fascist. So it, it, it was always going to be quite a potentially, you know, politically volatile situation, especially, like I say, with the teacher more recently. My experience when I was in Batley and Spen was really good. The people I met were really nice, and that included uh, people who were going to vote Labour, uh, people that were going to vote for Galloway. I even met some ex-Labour members who were going to vote for Galloway, under no illusions, I should add. And I, I tried to put that as, as best as possible down on the piece uh, because I think a lot of the the shibboleths and the kind of the assumptions that are made uh, around this are really they're very frustrating. You know, one is, oh, why don't local people understand that Galloway is a charlatan, he's in it for himself? Many of them think that and they're still going to vote for him. Or, um, you know... Uh, it's all about Palestine. Yes, Palestine is one issue, but this is also a place which has seen its magistrate close, its prison close, seen its A&E downgraded. The minute you get into Batley as a town, Batley and Spen is several towns in one village, the minute you get into Batley as a town, you realise the roads are really shocking. And it's like all of those really important things for those people which really matter are completely sidelined by the national media because they want to talk about the personalities. And people have pushed back on my piece about Galloway saying, why don't you say that he's X, Y, Z? You want to Google George Galloway? You can see a thousand and one stories talking about that. I want to talk about people in Batley and Spen, what they care about, why they're voting the way they're going to vote. Because realistically, Galloway may come second, he may come third. I think it's very unlikely he's going to win, but he's going to get a lot of votes. And we have to examine why. That's not because all the people voting for him are stupid or racist. Far from it. And it's a very broad range of people that I spoke to, by the way, that will be voting for him. That's a really important story. And fundamentally, I think, if you can understand that story, you can get a really good grasp on why Labour has such big problems right now. Really big problems. And they're not going away, by the way. They're going to intensify. They're going to get much, much worse. Of course, solidarity with Kim Ledbetter today. Disgusting scenes. And I think they shouldn't just be condemned. I think George Galloway needs to make quite substantive measures and moves to sort of stop people doing that and really trying to discredit it, you know, in a really, you know, in a really strong and affirmative way. But that's not, that is not the story. That is not the story. The story is about left behind places in this country. And it's, you know, it's, it's mocked by the media. Oh, left behind because Nigel Farage is the champion of left behind. No, there are some places which really are left behind. The number of people who are economically inactive in Batley is really high. The high street is, 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 has been totally smashed. People I spoke to are going to vote Galloway. Said so 15 years ago, the high street was lovely, and now it's all just takeaways, right? As much as people like a takeaway, you need more on the high street. Those are the things that the media should be talking about, but they're not. There's been that piece. There was Owen Jones's brilliant video. People should watch that. And there was a great piece by Maya uh, in The Guardian, a piece of reportage. But other than that, you're, you're basically, and sorry, I should say Lewis Goodall at, at Newsnight too. Other than that, you're not seeing the, jur- the sort of the journalistic industry, the media are not covering what matters to these people. And I think that explains a great deal uh, about the sort of levels of political apathy we see in this country. You say that George Galloway should come out strongly against this and try and stop it happening. I mean, in a way, I I think it's hard for any leader to stop anyone doing something in their name. I mean, in this case, it's not even clear, you know, that that harassment was done in his his name. At the same time, though, we we do know that George Galloway, as well as running on a sort of like I'm pro-Palestine and anti-Labour, does run on 
nowadays a sort of social socially conservative platform where he's always railing against woke culture and gender identity etc cetera, etc cetera. so it, it does seem to me that whilst he is you know happy to distance himself from this person who's harassed kim ledbeater i think he seems quite reluctant to actually speak out in in favor of gay rights because he thinks that that might lose him some votes and that he is leaning into as well as talking about you know, important issues like Palestine and Kashmir, he is trying to make sure that he doesn't put off anyone who is socially conservative and homophobic because he is desperate to court their their votes. Do you, do you think that's an unfair characterization of, of the, the strategy he's pursuing here? I think it's, it's, it's plausible. I think it's an important point to make, Michael. Do I think that George Galloway has a problem with gay people? I don't think there's any, I mean, his stuff on trans rights, I think that's a different conversation. Uh, in terms of, you know, Gay people, I, I, I've not seen the evidence. I mean, if people can submit that. Um, I think his personal position on trans rights is somewhat different. Uh, and obviously I don't agree with it. But what you're saying about he would never call these things out, he would never sort of publicly admonish anybody who, who, who may be a social conservative. I think that's correct. But, you know, he's not unique in doing that. You know, there are many, many conservative MPs, and I think actually many Labour MPs who, who lean into those same things uh, but because he's a one-man band, it's a lot easier to pick out. You know, Brexit was a classic example. You know, I don't think Brexit was racist, but clearly there were many, many racist arguments, anti-migration arguments that went into the Brexit debate. And many MPs knew that many people who vote for them in their constituency, Labour MPs, knew that many people in their constituencies would no longer vote Labour if they say, actually, immigration is good. You know, so uh, I, I think that's a sort of tendentious argument in so much as that applies to all politicians. Now, the question is, how destructive is it? Well, I think... In this immediate context, it's a seat where an MP was murdered. It's where a, a woman is being confronted by a group of men. I think in that particular context, yes, you, you need to have a really strong questioning of, of, of his views on these things. But I think it is unfair to say he, he uniquely as a politician gives these things carte blanche because I think I think lots of politicians do that. I think that's that's a lot of politics, Michael. I don't agree with it. You know, again, it's one of those things where on Navarro we talk about these things. I obviously don't agree with it. I'm a passionate defender and supporter of LGBTQ rights. If 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 there was a, a political party that was opposed to it, anyway, I wouldn't vote for it. But I, I do think it's unfair and inaccurate to say that all parties don't participate in what you're talking about to a degree. Mm. No, I don't think it's exceptional, but I do I do think that it's grotesque, I suppose, to be fighting a campaign against a gay woman who's being harassed essentially for being gay and not saying anything which suggests you're supportive of LGBT rights because you're courting people who don't believe in LGBT rights. I think, you know, that there is something quite morally disgusting about that, I suppose. And I'm not saying that's completely exceptional. I mean, I know there are loads of politicians who do this about all sorts of issues. I mean, we've talked about it a lot on this show when it comes to um, gypsy travellers, for example. But just, I mean, I think it is worth, you know, being clear here that... Galloway's refusal to come out in favour of gay rights is a real, real, real problem. No, no. I mean, I said that at the start. I said I, I said he should have a really strong position on this. He should he should condemn it in the strongest possible terms, and he should say he should say explicitly solidarity with Kim Ledbetter. This is not in my name, and and take concrete steps to st stop it. I mean, when I was in when I was in Batley and Spen and talking to various people around his campaign, they were aware that these elements do exist and that they would come in. Uh, and, and these are two separate questions in a way, Michael. So on the one hand. This gentleman is not part of the campaign. The people that were intimidating her are not part of the campaign. But then you're separately saying, because of George Galloway's, and that's one, let, let's put that into a discrete box for a second. And there's a separate point. You're saying, well, George Galloway needs to publicly state his support for LGBT rights because of this first thing. I mean, they're two, they're two separate questions. The first thing is reprehensible. The first thing is reprehensible. The second thing I, I don't agree with, I don't think it's progressive. I don't think a socialist has that position. But I, I do think they're different. I think the first thing kind of makes you a monster, right? The second thing, I think, again, we're saying lots of politicians behave like this. If I was in Batley and Spen, people say, oh, you support Galloway. If I was in Batley and Spen, my, my preferred candidate would be Kim Ledbetter. I think a lot of people feel like this. Kim Ledbetter, for me, is the best candidate, but a lot of people also look at Kirkley's council, which is Labour, was Labour run. They look at Keir Starmer and they say, I like Kim Ledbetter, but not as a Labour candidate. So if I lived there personally, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't vote. I probably wouldn't vote. Or I'd vote Kim Ledbetter. But the, and the, 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 what's really telling here, Michael, is that 
The Labour aren't going after the Tories. They're going after George Galloway. The reason being, I think, because the Tories have got this sewn up already, and it's about coming second. That's my suspicion, and that's the kind of that's the kind of the, the subtext of the attacks on Galloway. Yes, of course, it's justified because of something something appalling and abhorrent happened today. But I, I think we're going to see more of this over the coming days because the enemy for for Labour now in Batley and Spen it's not the Tories. It's George Galloway. That tells you again something quite big about the kind of erosion of of the Red Wall. And Batley and Spen is not a typical Red Bull seat. It was conservative till 1997, has a large Muslim population. But, you know, I mean, that is really telling, Michael. If, if you said four months ago, Labour will lose Hartlepool by 7,000 votes and they'll be targeting George Galloway in the Batley and Spen by-election, your jaw would have dropped and you would have said, wow, weak, Keir Stammer cannot survive that. The question is, can he?